Hi class, um, today we're going to be uh, lecturing on uh, the amalgam, class 2 preparation, 2.1 lecture, okay? All right, let's begin. Okay, so, um, okay, class 2 amalgam preparations. Here, uh, we're starting with the progression of uh, caries. Here, uh, there are a few common ways that caries uh, tends to progress. Uh, common one being uh, the first one, occlusally. Uh, second being right below the contact areas. And then uh, the third way is um, right around the CEJ or root caries. And it tends to travel along the enamel rods. Here's a little bit about the anatomy of a tooth. We've got the enamel, the dentin, where the pulp resides in, in here. And here the junction where the enamel and dentin meets called DEJ. And down here would be the CEJ. Uh, the path that the enamel um, rods are and the way the caries progresses. Uh, the enamel rods are at a slight angle here. And here you're seeing uh, a caries extending from the enamel towards the uh, pulp. So it, it does tend to travel along the DEJ towards the pulp or into the pulp. Uh, modern theories on caries management, uh, whether to leave decay or, or uh, totally remove the caries. Uh, I, I, I personally like to remove all the caries, and it's uh, especially on a young tooth, uh, uh, a primary tooth or uh, uh, a caries that's close to the uh, uh, pulp nerve. I like to apply a little bit of calcium hydroxide, so direct uh, or indirect pulp cap. Caries on the uh, proximal surface of posterior teeth, that's the most common, along with the occlusal. Uh, the different walls, uh, make sure you know these. You got the axial wall, the gingival, lingual, buccal, pulpal floor, and as well as the line angles, like the axial, buccal, line angle. Here's the axial pulpal line angle. You want to make sure that this is always smooth with an enamel hatchet or gingival trimmer. Down here, gingival trimmer at the gingival floor. You don't want these uh, sharp line angles that can add stress to the uh, amalgam restoration. More in the point angles, axial buccal pulpal angle and the axial lingual pulpal angle. The different steps on the cavity preparation. What you wanna do is make sure that you visualize the outline before you start to prep with that 330 burr. It says here about the gentle sweeping curves. Um, it's going to be a little challenging on the type it out when you're prepping. Uh, it's actually a little easier on the real tooth. So don't get uh, too stressed out if you uh, get carried away uh, uh, prepping, especially when you're getting towards that exit angle. Ideal preparation. 
want to do it along the primary grooves and then uh, with that 330 burr going about a millimeter in towards the secondary grooves for the extension for prevention. Another ideal preparation here, uh, showing the uh, fishtail on the molar and the dovetail on the, uh, well, what looks like a molar, but for bicuspids. I mean, you can use it for molars too. Visualizing the, the carries. And uh, you basically want to remove all the carries wherever that is. If you have less than 0.5 millimeters between two carries, just connect it. Just cut right through and connect it all. You want to remove any undermine enamel. You want to have the convergence, but not, not, not too angled either. So use that 330 and tip it to open this up. You can angle that, and if not, then you can also try to use the enamel hatchet. The extension for prevention, as I mentioned earlier, going into those uh, secondary grooves or pit and fissure areas. Those as exit angles that I mentioned earlier, you, those you want those to be 90 degrees, but the internal angles, the gingival floor, the axial pulpal, that you want to round off. You don't want a sharp 90 degree angle. That'll add stress on those amalgam restorations. Again, the exit at 90 degree cable surface. That you don't want to bevel though. You don't want to bevel the cable surface margins uh, above here on the occlusal surface. And um, you want to blend in the S-curve to the isthmus. And uh, you don't always need that S-curve, only as needed. The proximal extension. And then with the, uh, the depth here of the uh, box here, the gingival floor, ideally you want about one millimeter. Uh, for the uh, bicuspids, 1.5 millimeters for molars, but of course uh, that can be made wider depending on the carries. If there's carries, then you have to, if you have to extend, you have to extend. And then using that uh, RGS1 probe in here to make sure you got about a 0.3 uh, millimeter opening here, 0.3 to 0.5 when there's uh, two preps adjacent to each other. That's what we talked about, about the 0.5 here when you got the two preps. Making sure everything is smooth. Everything is smooth here when you're when you cut through it. If you can't accomplish all that with the uh, 330 burr on the 245 in the box, then use that enamel hatchet to help smooth everything out. Both the floor and the line angles. Uh, know these numbers. You want the uh, isthmus here to be about 1 to 1.5 and for the molar uh, gingival uh, floor here to be about 1.5. Now we're going to be discussing the resistance form. You want that to be converging, especially in the box here with that 245 burr. And as I mentioned in lecture 2.2, uh, you want the non-functional uh, cusp line angle to be at 90 degrees. You don't want to extend too far here because you're going to weaken and undermine the enamel and it can cause a, a fracture. Restricting that extension. Again, you extend it too much. You can weaken that proximal wall. You want that flaring out just a little over 90 degrees. You want that bulkness there to be 1.5 millimeters minimum. So using that 330, it's about 1.5. You can use that as a guide. And then the 245 here in the box and get that converging shape.
with a, with a 0.5 millimeter into the dentin, 0.5 to one millimeter. And smoothing out, beveling this axiopulpal line angle as well as the gingival here. And for here using that gingival uh, trimmer, you can use it here as well. As I mentioned before, avoiding sharp corners, you want everything flowing smooth. And the only place you want that 90 degree angle is over here at the lining, uh, the uh, exit angle. About the S curve and the smooth outline. Uh, for the box here, once you use that 245 burr to drop that box there, uh, you can use that enamel hatchet again to smooth everything out. You don't want anything unsupported or too angled here that can cause a future uh, fracture of that amalgam. I mean, of uh, the uh, of the enamel. Now about the grooves and the slots, the retentive grooves. You can use a half millimeter uh, round burr along the proximal, proximal um, line angles here, never on the axial wall here, only here. Again, about the dovetail extension and the uh, here they're using a different burr to create this uh, groove. This, this looks like a 169. That works fine for that half round burr. The retentive groove again. I, uh, I prefer the half round, half millimeter round uh, burr to create this. Because with that 169 line angle, um, you could accidentally uh, make that groove a little too high to the occlusal area. Along the axial buckle and the axial lingual line angles. Here's an illustration of that half millimeter uh, round burr. Again, you wanna visualize and, and have accessibility to it. Ideal form. You need to be able to get that with that uh, enamel hatchet into that box. You don't want that isthmus to be too small that you won't be able to get the condensing uh, amalgam instrument in there to condense the amalgam. And now with uh, the remo removal of the caries, um, you want to remove all the caries as necessary. Here's just a few examples of the outlines. Here's an illustration of that uh, gingival trimmer, smoothing out that gingival uh, floor line angle. Some more pictures of it. And uh, it covers it all. Basically you wanna remove all the caries, flush it out, have everything, all the outlines smooth, uh, and you don't wanna over dry it. You don't wanna desiccate. And inspect it all right before you uh, start with the uh, restoration part of it. Thank you.